Hello everyone, welcome in 16th episode of Frontend News Podcast. For those who don't know us, it's Chris, I'm Technical Director of Frontend House and we have Tommy K, who is our Technical Leader. Hey Tommy. Hey Chris, how are you mate? All good, all good. Today we have five news for you guys. First one is about Angular update. And the second one will be about Bootstrap new release. We will also show you guys what's new in Visual Studio Code. And there is an interesting news about the Wikimedia Foundation, uh, which switched to the Vue.js. And the coolest one about performance using use layout effect. Stay tuned, watch the intro, and see you guys in 10 seconds. Again, as promised, uh, we're gonna speak about Angular 12.2 update. Tomasz, what's in it? There are some minor fixes inside the new release of the Angular, but before I will speak about them, the first thing I want to mention is that I feel a little bit sad and disappointed. Why? Because, Chris, you didn't ask me how was my week. So, my lovely audience, please uh, ask me in the comment section how was my week because Chris is not interested in my life. Not at all. Sorry, guys. I missed that. So, maybe you would like to ask me something. Yes, indeed. I'm really curious what's in Angular Update. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> let's focus on uh, today's topics. And yeah, Angular Update minor release. Uh, this is the version 12.2.0. And inside we can find uh, three minor fixes. Uh, the first one is for the compiler itself. The second one is connected with the Angular core. And it's about the error fixes. Like uh, in the past, there was an, a bug with uh, the incorrect error was reported when you were trying to recreate a view. So now they just fixed that issue. And there is also the third fix for the language service. If you're interested in more description, just check the release notes as always. Uh, links are, guys, links are in the description. Yes, you know what to do. And yeah, that's all from the Angular release. But I'm curious, uh, Chris, do you use Angular often those days? Not at all, to be honest. Uh, I mostly go with uh, React. And yeah, React is my first choice. Uh, however, in Frontend House, we do one quite a big project in Angular and it, yeah, it performs really well. Uh, guys are really thrilled. Um, to work on this. So yeah, we have just one project, but really cool one. Uh, however, yeah, in Frontend House, in Niki, uh, we still like, choose uh, to go with uh, React. Yeah, that's uh, that's true. React, in my opinion, is uh, a little bit maybe not easier, but it gives uh, more field with uh, the independence. I mean, different developers can have their own idea about the architecture and design patterns that will be used inside uh, the project. And React leaves a totally freedom uh, for the developer to choose the correct approach that will fit and match the requirements at its best. And Angular, like it has a predefined layers with the different responsibilities, and it's really hard to interpret them and create a different architecture than is proposed with the Angular. So um, yeah, I prefer uh, more freedom <laughs> and uh, I would love to give the freedom to all, all developers all over the world. Tomasz, I couldn't agree more. Uh, it was perfect explanation. It was like expert zone kind of topic, to be honest. Uh, cool one, thank you. So let's go to the bootstrap, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yep, bootstrap, you're right. Uh, we received the first minor release. Uh, which is 5.1, and uh, I believe I don't have to explain what the Bootstrap is. I don't think so. But for those who didn't use Bootstrap, uh, this is the really nice UI library uh, that can be adapted in our projects and makes the MVP uh, appear much faster because we get a predefined set of components and uh, functionalities from the user interface world that are just ready to be used inside our apps. <laughs> one minute ago, you mentioned that you don't need to explain Bootstrap and then you spend one I minute know. talking about Bootstrap. Uh, I know. Yeah. 
I'm sorry you about that. You love to share your knowledge. <laughs> yes, that, exactly. It was like, you know, it was just, it just want to uh, go outside uh, from my heart, so. I know, this, I know. <laughs> I know, no worries. But what's in? What's in the bootstrap? A lot of things, a lot of stuff, uh, a lot of new things, uh, also in the minor release, so we don't have much time to speak about all of them, so I will just give a sneak peek what's new. And we can find the experimental support for the CSS grid, we can find off canvas in the navbar, new placeholders components, um, horizontal collapse support components, new helpers uh, for, for the CSS, new CSS variables in their utilities, uh, refactored JavaScript which makes uh, the bootstrap components more performed and works a little bit faster and really much 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 more insight i really encourage you to check the release notes if you are using bootstrap in your project it's worth to update your version the bootstrap team also um, try at its best to support the legacy code to support the previous version of the bootstrap libraries do not make developers like apply the breaking changes in their apps to to, to make it works uh, so um, yeah, just use the newest version, play with the bootstrap if you're using it and make your life easier. Wow, Thomas, nice explanation. Uh, quite a new features here. Uh, I'm curious, uh, when do you think it's best to go with bootstrap and when do you think uh, it's like better to do a custom CSS? This is actually a good question, Chris. It depends and it depends on the case. This is the answer. Uh, <laughs> but to be more precise, Bootstrap is a good library to utilize in your project when, for example, you want to build a lot of functionalities or you want to deliver the functionalities and you don't mind about how it looks. I mean, you don't need a custom designs. This is good for like building the dashboard or admin tools where you want to create, you know, a useful menu with, uh, with the content without putting a lot of effort in creating the uh, custom CSS. Uh, because the, the main thing you want to deliver is the functionalities. So the Bootstrap is really ideal library to utilize if you just want to focus on the functionalities. Uh, that's my answer. Perfect explanation. Thank you, Tomasz. Thank you, Chris. Next one is uh, quite important for everyone because uh, it's going to be about tool we use every day in every single project. What, 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 what is it? What, what, what is, is it? I, I don't know. I think it's Visual Studio Code. Oh, man. Yes, you're right. Visual Studio Code. Ah, Visual Studio Code. Guys, uh, the first question from my side, what tools do you use to develop your code? And yeah, just put your answers in the comment section under this video and we will respond to you if we do the same. This episode is going to have a lot, a lot of comments because we ask about them like six times. I don't yes. know. But Tomasz, what's in the Visual Studio Code? That's the main point. New release of the Visual Studio Code, we received a bunch of updates, fixes, improvements from the different areas. For example, we received a new live preview extension. Uh, this is like in the experimental mode, but uh, we can preview the JavaScript and HTML apps in, inside the Visual Studio Code. We don't have to open really? the browser. Mm -hmm. So this looks and sounds nice. Um, because it will reduce the number of windows we have opened uh, on our uh, displays. Does it does it run like Chrome or what? I believe it's on Chromium. Yep. Okay. Another thing is the extended theme customization. Uh, so you can customize your theme and your colors for your IDE uh, in more granular way. Uh, so you can make your IDE looks exactly as you want and as you wish. <laughs> this is like the nice touch uh, on, on this IDE. Next thing is the drag and drop terminals. So you can move your terminal across different windows, uh, different windows, of course, of the Visual Studio Code and uh, move the terminals between those. You know, a lot of uh, magic with my hands today. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and a bunch of uh, cool stuff, which you really should check in the documentation. Chris, what editor do you use to work with the code? Oh my gosh, it was it. I mean, I was still waiting for something game-changing. Oh, game-changing. Yes. 
Um, no. Yes, no. There is no game changing because the tool is perfect and I use it. I use it every day. I use it for every kind of project. Uh, love it. We'll stay with it yep. as long as I can. Are they paying you some money for such uh, dedication? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey guys from the Visual Studio Code, I'm here. <laughs> I'm here too. <laughs> Tomasz, you have daily in six minutes, uh, so let's go to the next topic, then, which is... <laughs> let's <laughs> rush, let's rush. They switched to Vue.js. Why? Yeah, Wikimedia decided to switch to the Vue.js. In 2018, they started doing an investigation over different web frameworks, like Angular, React, Vue.js, Ember, and much, much more, to decide from the architecture perspective, which framework would they use for their next uh, upcoming products and for, for their future releases. And after two years, I mean, after three years of experimenting with the different frameworks, the Wikimedia team decided to switch to Vue.js for the future products. So probably- After how many years? Uh, three, three years of experiments and making three investigation. Years. They spent like half billion dollars, probably, on experiments. <laughs> yes, so uh, maybe this is this is the right uh, argument to use for uh, our budget for our experiments, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do my best, of course. <laughs> Great, but uh, yeah, this is the news. So probably somewhere in the future, when you will open the Wikipedia, you will see it has been done with the Vue.js. Nice. Lovely. <laughs> Lovely. Lovely news, but I mentioned that the last one uh, is the most important. Is it? Uh, yes, because it's about your lovely performance and how to make it yes. better. That's why I'm very curious. Um, the last news about your lovely performance. So difference between the use effect and use layout effect in React. Probably you know what is React and what the React hooks are. We have explained that in our previous episodes for sure. And today I just want to compare pretty fast two things uh, in React. So one hand we have use effect and on second hand we have the use layout effect. What are the difference? So use effect works like asynchronous functions and use layout effect works in the synchronous way. In most of the cases, like in 99%, if you will, for example, make an API call and want to deliver this data to your component, uh, you will use use effect, fetch the data, put this data into state and take this data from the state and put this somewhere into the uh, template, yes, in, in DOM structure. Uh, so most of the times it's okay to do like that, you will see no problems, but sometimes, for example, when you have a placeholders for the data and you fetch the data from the API, or for example, you have no placeholders, it's like empty screen and you fetch the data from the API, or you replace the current data with the API data, you can observe in some cases like little flickering. So you, you, you see that something is switching. Yeah, it's just is usually the case. Yeah, and this is because of the use effect and how it works. This is because it works in the asynchronous way. So uh, the component has been rendered and uh, during that time we are fetching the data, but we can see the rendered content and after it has been replaced with the new data, okay? So with the use layout effect, we can make it synchronous. So we are fetching the data and render the component once the data has been fetched. So we will uh, get rid of this flickering uh, issue. And that's the small uh, small hint at the end of our front-end news. Tomasz, that was very well explanation. Good. Yeah. I'm quite impressed. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Chris. It's really hard to impress you. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> oh, I'm really not, happy. Come on. <laughs> thank you, uh, thank you, Tomasz, and thank you for those news. You have one minute, one minute to go to your daily call. That's true. Uh, That's so, so true. <laughs> see you in two weeks, and guys, see you on YouTube, Twitter, Spotify, Instagram, whenever you want. We are, we are everywhere, and of course, our lovely website frontendhouse.com. See you guys there, and Tomasz, see you soon. Thank you.